And Tom Aspinall joining us now. Tom, were you able to watch that piece? Because it, it gets me pumped up, and I'm not even fighting on Saturday. Yeah, yeah, I just watched it. I'm pretty pumped up. I've not even uh, managed to have a coffee yet this morning, so that's my little morning coffee for me right there. That was nice. Thank you for that. Uh, absolutely, man. Well, you didn't do it. Yeah, no, I put it all together myself. He's just thanking, he's thanking me, and, you know, yeah. You're welcome, Tom. You're welcome. Um, I know your buddies with Bisping. I, I was with him last week in Brazil. All he was doing was singing your praises. He is looking so forward to you kind of getting in there and, and doing what you're doing, and he thinks you have the chance to be very special. What does he say to you behind closed doors about this week and how to, how to prepare for this short-notice title fight? Well, me and Bispin's a good friend of mine. Me and Bispin have a really good relationship. You know, most of the time we are busting each other's balls a little bit. But uh, Bispin gave me some really good advice, and the advice was, this is not about the last two weeks. This is not about the last two and a half weeks that I found out about this fight. This is about the last plus 20 years that I've been involved in martial arts. And I think Bispin's absolutely right. You know, I'm just taking it for what it is. You know, I would have liked more notice, of course. But I've been training my whole life for this, so I've definitely, definitely got a chance of winning on Saturday night and I think I'm going to do it so with that with that being said when you found out how much did you have to ramp things up was it 90 percent was it 50 percent how, how much did things change when you found out you got this fight well I was, I was definitely training before but I was just training like helping teammates out I was, I'm always in the gym every day anyway but um yeah I had to go all in twice three times a day Shortest training camp ever, like just over a week before the travel started and stuff. But uh, yeah, I, yeah, I still feel good. You know, I feel really, really good. I feel good for five rounds. I'll be able to do it absolutely no problem. So I'm happy about it all. It's absolutely no problem for me. Tom, not many people, you know, have seen the type of relationship that you and your dad, Andy, have. And we just, we just don't see it that often uh, in this sport or really any sport. What, what has it been like, you know, walking around this fight week with your dad, knowing that you are so close to possibly achieving this lifelong dream. I mean, seeing yourself in Times Square like that, I, I just can't even imagine how special that much be, must be. Oh, do you know the weirdest thing about it is it feels completely normal. Like, I feel like this is what was supposed to happen. I don't know, like everyone who I was with when we saw the stuff on Times Square especially was like amazed by it. But for me, I was just like, I don't know. I can't, I, it sounds really cocky, but I kind of expected it. And uh, yeah, I, I feel like me and my dad, we've seen this in our minds before anyone else seen it. And it's just another fight week for me. I'm just treating it like that. To your point though, I mean, I remember talking to you a few years ago and you would always say, I'm, I'm gonna take my time. Like I, I am not gonna rush this rise to the top because we saw everything happening so quickly for you. Do you feel now, you know, just a day away from this big moment that it has been fast or, or is this exactly just the moment right on time for you? No, I think everything's worked out perfect, to be honest. I don't feel like it's rushed. At the time when I was saying stuff like that, you got to remember I was fighting with one leg. Uh, and then when my knee finally blew out and everything was fixed, I felt like, you know, I've got to start making steps towards the title. That's what I did. And I feel like it was the best thing at the time. It was a terrible thing that happened to me. But after, I feel great. I feel mentally so free now because I've got a working good body. And yeah, I feel like everything's perfect. Everything's worked out perfectly. Tom, I heard you found out about this fight in like kind of a, a weird way. Can you explain what that was like for you? What do you mean, weird? I heard like four in the morning and then it was like the, the next Oh, day. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Yeah, I was sleeping. I was sleeping. Uh, I, got a, I got a call on my phone. Um, Hunter Campbell called me. He's never called me before. I've, I obviously have his number. We texted back and forward a little bit over the years. But yeah, he's never directly called me. Um, so yeah, he woke me up and I answered. Well, first of all, I actually missed the call. I thought, I'm going to go back to sleep. And then I thought, who am I kidding? How am I supposed to go back to sleep? What is going on? So I gave him a call back and uh, obviously he told me about the news. And yeah, it was, it was exciting news. It was good. It was good. I feel good about the whole thing. I love it. So you, you get to spar with uh, Tyson Fury, Rico uh, Verhoeven. How does that help you, like, confidence-wise, to know that you have some of the best guys in the history of uh, boxing and kickboxing at your disposal? Oh, massively. And I mean... Sparring and training are two completely different things. I was saying yesterday to DC, actually, um, I spar 
way worse than I fight. Like, just generally, I spar way worse. I feel like it's two completely different things. But to spend time with them guys, especially Rico, I spent a lot of time with him recently. Um, we sparred a lot of rounds in the last few weeks. And, yeah, just to be able to hang with guys like that and, and feel what that feels like just helps so much. You guys know. You guys know exactly what it's like to train with high-level guys. If you can hang with them guys and you're doing okay, like, it gives you a lot of confidence. Absolutely. You know, Tom, today you weigh 261. Obviously, it's the heaviest you've ever weighed in. Is it just because of the short notice? And do you feel like you'll be able to still fight the same type of fight with a few extra pounds? Or did you wake up and eat breakfast this morning or something? <laughs> no, I, I'm just a little bit heavy, you know. I think it's probably the short notice. Um, but I think generally I'm just getting a bit, as I'm getting a bit older, I'm just getting a bit more heavy, a bit more muscular maybe. I don't know. I don't know. Probably the short notice, to be honest. But my, my weight fluctuates a lot. Like, I can go up and down 15 pounds in a day easily. I think that's just what big guys do. Yeah, that's that winter coat that the heavyweights get. You know, they say the bear go to hibernate. You know, you put on a few extra pounds, <laughs> be nice and cuddly. Sergey Pavlovich, though, very dangerous guy, very dangerous opponent. How impressed are you with what he's been able to do six first-round finishes in a row? And how do you approach a challenge like this where it would seem as though one mistake can ultimately cost you your championship? Yeah, I don't think you can watch him and not be impressed. Do you know what I mean? He does everything right. He's not really put a foot wrong apart from his debut in the UFC, and that was a long time ago. So, yeah, I just got to do my thing. I, I can't be thinking about him too much, but... Yeah, yeah, he's definitely one punch away from winning, but when the shoe's on the other foot, it's exactly the same thing. Like, I'm one punch away from winning. This is heavyweight MMA at the very, very top level, so you're never one punch away from disaster in the heavyweight division, so we've both got a massive chance of winning. You know, when you get to this point where you're fighting for a title, you have to be thinking about all the people that helped you get here. When you make that walk and all the people that, that helped you along the way, because it certainly does take a village. Who's, who's the first name that's going to pop into your head? Who's the person that you're going to be thinking about that helped you get to the moment that you're going to be in tomorrow night? Well, obviously my dad. He, he's been there since the first training session that I ever went to when I was eight years old. Do you know what I mean? It's not, um, it's not rocket science to figure that out. But to be honest, I, I don't focus on stuff like that before fights because all that weighs heavy on me, all that pressure and thinking about who helped me get there, who didn't help me get there, the journey, all that kind of stuff. I ain't thinking about that. I'm going to go in there tomorrow night and I'm going to enjoy myself. And this is my opportunity. I'm going to enjoy every second of it. And all, all that other stuff, I'll think about that after the fact. But for right now, I'm, uh, I'm going in there tomorrow night to win. I'm going in to enjoy myself. And uh, that's all I'm focused on right now. Well... I cannot wait to see it, man. It is going to be a fun fight on Saturday night. Tom Aspinall, two weeks' notice, the biggest fight of his career. Good luck, my friend. Thank you guys very much. Have a good day.